Hi, I'm Marie. Hi, I'm Jay. And today we are presenting to you the research that we did while developing the Mayo shirt. The Maya shirt is an upper limb exosuit that supports the shoulder against gravity. It was designed to assist people with a movement impairment during activities of daily living. The textile-based soft compliant base of the Maya shirt comprises a thorax harness, an upper arm anchor and a forearm cuff. Between the rigid shoulder anchor and the upper arm anchor, a force-bearing tendon generates an assistive torque around the shoulder. An inertial measurement unit and a force sensor provide feedback to the gravity assistance controllers. The assistive force in the Maya shirt partially compensates the torque in the shoulder induced by gravity. For example, for a female user of 1.7 meters of height and 60 kilograms of weight, and an assistance set to 60%, the maximum force at 90 degrees of arm elevation is 58 newtons. In this study, the Maisha tendons were tethered to a motor unit located behind the participant. Based on the arm elevation measured by the IMU, a reference force was calculated from a gravity estimator model. The force error was determined from a direct force measurement at the upper arm anchor. For the first controller type, the force feedback was set by a PA force controller. Summed up with the gravity estimator reference, the direct force reference was fed to the lower level motor current controller, therefore closing the outer direct force controller loop. For the second controller type, a velocity feedback was generated from the force error through a PI admittance controller. The velocity reference was fed to a lower level motor speed controller, closing the outer indirect force controller loop. An additional movement velocity positive feedback was used to enhance controller reactivity. During the experiments, participants followed a position trajectory with live feedback on a screen. Experiments were performed both without any support and with the Maya shirt and the respective controllers engaged. For the study, five participants were recruited. In the first part, participants were asked to follow a sinusoidal reference trajectory. Frequencies ranged from 0.1 to 1 Hz, with a fixed amplitude between 10 and 90 degrees to match the movement components of activities of daily living. When comparing the system response for both controller types, the direct force controller and the indirect force controller caused increasing interaction forces when the participants moved with increasing frequency. Applying a 3 decibel cutoff frequency criterion, the indirect force controller had a higher bandwidth than the direct force controller, with only the latter covering the bandwidth requirements for activities of daily living. In the second part of the study, participants followed a minimum jerk trajectory with varying elevation heights. Position tracking errors and movement smoothness were comparable for the unpowered, the direct force controller powered and the indirect force controller powered conditions. However, in line with bandwidth results, force tracking errors were larger for the direct force controller, while interaction forces were close to the controller dead band of 3 newtons for the indirect force controller. Similarly, force tracking was smoother when the indirect force controller was engaged. With a bandwidth of 0.78 Hz, only the indirect force controller was able to fulfill the bandwidth requirement for activities of daily living. Both controllers allowed participants to track the position reference accurately and smoothly. However, with the indirect force controller, force tracking was much smoother and parasitic interaction forces much smaller than with the direct force controller. In conclusion, an indirect force controller is the more suitable and pragmatic approach for providing gravity assistance in a tendon-driven upper limb exosuit, such as the Maya shirt.